Hi everyone, my name is Masni Azian Akia and I will be covering the third module of the Engineering Economy course. I believe you have covered um, the fundamental of Engineering Economy related to the cash flow and the value of money measured against different timelines. So, in this video, we will be looking into the rate of return and how we can make economic decisions based on the rate of return analysis. Okay, so stay tuned. Okay, let's look at an analogy. Assuming that you need a huge sum of money to start up your business. So, of course, one of the options is to go to the bank and apply for the loan. Once approved, the bank would give you the amount of money that you needed. And that total amount is referred to as the principal amount. So, of course, you are required to repay that amount to the bank on a monthly basis depending on the term of the loan. If you recalculate the total amount you repay to the bank, you will notice that you are paying more than the principal amount that you borrow. How can that be? That's a loss, right? So basically, the total amount that you repay is actually the principal amount plus the interest being charged on your loan. The interest rate is being charged under the economical concept that the value of money change over time. So in the perspective of the borrower or the lender, the interest rate is the rate of return. It's a return to their corporation. It's a return to their organization. So the rate of return is calculated from the unrecovered balance of your borrowed money, not from the principal amount. For example, if you borrow five ringgit from your friend and you promise to repay him one ringgit on a weekly basis, so ideally you would need five a total of five weeks to return the full amount to your friend. So, however, in the context of economy, the interest will be charged on the balance, the unpaid balance of the amount you borrowed. Let's say in week one, you already paid one ringgit. So the remaining balance of your loan is four ringgit. So the interest rate that will be charged for the next payment is based on the four ringgit, not the initial five ringgit. So in week two, if you pay another one ringgit, you have another three ringgit balance. So the interest rate that will be charged on the next payment is based on the interest rate charged to the three ringgit. Okay, so um, you see the amount of interest, it changed for every time period as it is based on the unpaid balance, not the principal amount. Okay, let's look at that example, how we can apply the calculation for the rate of return. Malik took out a 1,000 ringgit loan at 10% interest rate per year for four years to buy a portable 3D printer for his new business startup. From the lender's perspective, the investment in this young engineer is expected to produce an equivalent net cash flow of 315 ringgit and 47 cents for each of the four years. Let us compare the calculation for the rate of return based on the unrecovered investment and based on the principal amount. The first step, as always, is to draw the cash flow diagram. We are going to draw the cash flow diagram from the lender's perspective. So, we know the timeline is for 4 years and Malik borrowed 1,000 ringgit, which means money goes out from the perspective of the lender. So, at year 0, 1,000 ringgit cash flow is pointed downwards. Then, the interest rate of the loan is 10%. The lender expects that Malik can earn net profit of 315 ringgit and 47 cents from year 1 to year 4. So that's an annual series cash flow from year 1 to year 4. So basically, the concept of rate of return is that if you convert the total amount paid by Malik, then it should be equivalent to the amount that he borrowed. Let's say if we convert the annual series to an equivalent present worth, we would need to multiply the annual values with the PA factor. Notice the abbreviation used, PA and PA. That's the tips of ensuring you are using the correct conversion factor. Now substitute the A value with 315 ringgit and the AP, sorry, the PA factor based on the compound interest table. 
your final answer should be 1000 ringgit so ideally annual payment of 350 ringgit is equivalent to the amount malik initially borrowed which is 1000 ringgit let's look in detail how the rate of return is applied on the unrecovered balance if you draw up the table detailing the cash flow for each year in year zero the only cash flow exists is 1000 ringgit going out from the lender so the cash flow is negative 1000 ringgit and the ending recovered balance is negative 1000 ringgit so in year one the carried over unrecovered balance is negative 1000 ringgit the interest will be charged on this amount by which 10 percent of 1000 ringgit we will get the value of 100 ringgit of interest also in year one money starts coming in so there's an additional 315 ringgit in our cash flow the recovered amount has to be deducted with the interest rate by which 315 ringgit minus 100 ringgit so the balance for the principal amount is 215 ringgit and 47 cents finally we add that balance to our principal amount by which negative 1000 ringgit plus 215 ringgit so the remaining unrecovered balance is 784 ringgits so on year two the unrecovered balance is reduced so the interest rate is based on the unrecovered balance of 784 ringgit not the 1000 ringgit as there are 315 ringgit cash flow coming in the balance to cover the principal loan becomes higher than previous year which is 237 ringgit so you repeat the calculation for the remaining year finally if you total up all the recovered amount you will get exactly 1000 ringgit which is the principal amount malik owed the total interest malik paid to the lender is 261 ringgit now let us consider the calculation for the rate of return if it is based on the principal amount. Basically, the same idea applies. The difference this time is the interest is based on the principal amount. Remember, the principal amount Malik borrowed is 1,000 ringgit. So, the amount of interest Malik have to pay will remain to be 100 ringgit every year. So, if we complete the table, you will realize that the recovered amount is just 861 ringgit which is not sufficient to cover the amount he borrowed the total interest collected increases dramatically to 400 ringgit if you compare between these two methods of calculating rate of return clearly an interest rate applied only to the principal amount takes longer time to settle in addition the total interest is also higher in practice, this situation is referred to as the installment financing problem. So next time you want to make a loan from the bank, please look at the terms. Make sure the interest rate is applied to the unrecovered balance, not the principal amount.